there, it's Brian Goulet of the Goulet Pen Company and InkNouveau.com. Today I'm going to show you the all-new Edison Beaumont. It's a brand new pen that just came out from Edison. It's a production line, so it is going to be available through a variety of retailers. Uh, I just got my hands on some. It's the beginning of August of 2012 here, so this is, uh, you know, the kind of the first time I'm getting to play with them, and, and I'll compare them to some of the other Edisons. The Edison Beaumont is the newest of the Edison production line of pens. It comes in a box like so. This is uh, how all the Edisons come. It's kind of like this faux, you know, alligator skin type box. Um, uh, there's the pen. It's in three different colors. There is a uh, sapphire flake, a bedrock flake, and onyx flake. Um, all flaky. So um, they're, they're smaller Edison pens than some of the other ones, and I will compare them to the other Edison pens. Uh, but anyway, these are the three colors that are offered. The hardware that comes on them is set, so you don't get a choice of you know, silver or gold colored hardware. It's uh, dictated by the pen. So the sapphire has silver, the uh, bedrock has gold, and the onyx has silver as well. And the same goes for the nib. The nib on um, the onyx and sapphire are both, uh, you know, silver colored. And then the one on the bedrock is two-tone, so it's got kind of a, you know, gold look with a little silver trim on the outside here. I'll show you in case you haven't seen the Edison nibs before. These are the same Edison number six nibs that are used on a lot of the Edison pens. Actually, um, all of the production Edison pens except for the uh, Edison Nouveau Encore. That uses the smaller uh, Edison nib, but all of the other nibs that are used on Edisons are the same as these ones. So that means you're going to get the choice of extra fine, fine, medium, or broad with these nibs on, um, on the, be on the um, Beaumont. So there you have it. Um, the Beaumont is uh, unique to any of the production pens. It's kind of taking some of the elements that the Encore introduced and, and adopting them a little bit. You, you probably can't help but notice the similarities between the Encore and the Beaumont. So I'll kind of show you all the similarities here. Size-wise, they're very, very close. Um, the Beaumont is actually a couple of millimeters shorter um, than the Encore. And you, if you've you know ever seen any of the other Edison pens, Edison's is known for kind of making larger pens. There's a Hudson just by comparison. Um, and this Hudson uses the same nib as, as the Beaumont. So, you know, a lot of the pens are larger. So Brian Gray is working towards some smaller pens, which, you know, the Encore was um, the first production smaller pen that he's really made. So um, he took some of those elements and incorporated them, like the um, the center band. It was the first production center band he's ever done. He incorporated that on the Beaumont. Uh, you'll notice that it's about twice as thick, though. The center band is more pronounced on the Beaumont than it is on the Encore. Uh, the Encore has the medallion on the top, which is uh, the first time that he's done that. Um, the Beaumont does not have that. It has kind of a tapered finial, but it's a black finial, so it's kind of a contrasting, not contrasting, complementing color, I guess, to the rest of the pen. Same thing on the back end of the pen. It's black, and then uh, the grip section as well is black, which um, that that's um, I've seen that in a lot of vintage pens. I don't see that as much these days, but I actually really kind of like it. You know, the other two colors are the same way, where they've got the black, you know, all the black ex uh, accents there. So I actually really kind of like that element. The um, the cap itself is a little bit wider in diameter than the Encore is. The overall length of the Beaumont is 130 millimeters, which is just over five inches. It's uh, when you post it, it's actually it's actually shorter than the Encore posted um, because of the way it's tapered and because of how much uh, room he made in the cap on that pen uh, on the on the Beaumont. He's kind of making strides towards uh, you know his engineering and stuff. So there are the two pens next to each other. You can see the difference in the size of the Edison number five and number six nib. Uh, the number five is the smaller one on the Encore. The number six is the bigger one on the Beaumont. So it's quite a difference in size there. 
um, they do write just a little bit differently. The number six nib writes just a little bit drier. I find the number five to put down a little bit more ink. Um, so that's something you should kind of be aware of. But um, the grip is tapered just a little bit differently. It's got kind of this contour grip. If you have a Premier, um, you know, I've got an Edison Nouveau Premier right here. And uh, there's a couple other pens that have the same grip too. But that's that same, you know, kind of, you know, perfectly rounded contoured grip or whatever you want to call it on the, on the Premier that's also on the Beaumont. The one on the Encore is a little bit more tapered. So that's, uh, that's you know, another difference there. But, um, you know, size-wise, when it's posted, the Beaumont is uh, 149 millimeters, which is just under 6 inches. So it's, it's not too bad. It's, it's pretty short, and it's not real cap-heavy. It's very well-balanced um, when, you, when you hold it. It's a little, oh gosh, the pen is so light, it's hard to say that it's like, you know, uh, nib-heavy or anything. It's really just kind of feels well-balanced however you hold it, because the whole thing is only 16 grams, uh, when you have, which is just, a, you know, over half an ounce. Uh, when, when you have the whole body of the pen, just the, the body of itself is only 10 grams, which is about as much as most caps weigh on other pens. So this is a very, very light pen. So if you like light pens, you know, this one is right in there. Um, it's the exact same weight as the Encore, um, but the Encore is a little bit heavier in the cap. Um, the body is lighter on the Encore, so I guess if you're splitting hairs, the Encore will be a little bit more cap heavy, and the Beaumont will be um, a little bit more balanced, I guess. So, but you're talking about a couple of grams here. It's, it's probably not something you'll notice unless you have the two pens side by side and you're comparing them. Uh, really, a pen this light is not going to feel heavy pretty much however you hold it. It really will just kind of do whatever you want it to. Um, one of the cool things about the Edison pens, if you haven't seen this feature before, is that the nibs are actually removable and swappable. Um, if you pull out the, nibs, the, the nib section, remove the converter, you can actually just kind of grab uh, like so and just untwist the whole nib housing right out of the section. Um, and what's cool about that is you can get nib units by themselves and swap them out. So if you want an extra fine and a broad, or if you want to get a custom ground italic from Brian Gray and also an extra fine or a fine or, or whatever the case may be, you can get just the nib unit without having to buy a whole other pen and you can get you know, a different writing experience with the same pen without the same financial investment of buying a whole second pen. Of course, then you don't have two pens to keep inked up all the time, but you know, that's how it goes. Um, the pen itself is a cartridge converter pen, just like um, most all of the other, uh, just like all the other Edison production pens. He ha has done some custom blow fillers, and I hear he's working on a piston filler. But that's going to be uh, that's not going to be a production pen. So they're all cartridge converter pens. It's a standard international uh, converter. It takes standard international cartridges um, like these little guys. Uh, they should look pretty familiar to you if you've been around pens at all. Um, so there you go. It fits on there. Um, a standard international cartridge will hold about a half a milliliter of ink. The converter holds just a little bit more, like 0.6 milliliters. When I when I tested and inked up the pen, you know and then drain it back out. I got about 0.8 when you count, you know, what's in the converter plus what fills up the feed and everything. So 0.8 milliliters is not too bad. That's enough to get, you know, a decent amount of writing. But if you want to get more writing out of it, just like uh, all the other Edisons, you can convert it to an eyedropper. And the way that you do that is you pull the converter out, you just throw a little bit of silicone grease here on the threads where the body meets the, the grip section and you fill the body up with ink right up until it gets about to the threads and then you just screw the pen back together and then you have the whole body filled with ink and you can write to your heart's content with about four and a half milliliters which is just an enormous volume of ink even in this small little pen you know because you're using the whole body to fill that up so that's pretty cool um, you've got that option and uh... you know the pen is postable it's small it uses um... i wanted to show you comparing it to some of the other pens here. Now if you're uh, if you like the big pens you've probably heard of the Collier. The Collier is considerably larger than the Beaumont. Um, it's, uh, it still uses the same nib though. So the nib on the Beaumont looks 
pretty massive when you compare it uh, to a much larger pen like the Collier. So there, there you have it there. Um, same number six nib. The uh, Collier does not post, but that should give you an idea of the size. Collier is a, is a big daddy. Um, let's see here. I've got the Hudson. That's another big one as well. Um, another very long one. Uh, not as big in diameter as the Collier, but it's still pretty big. Um, now let me get this back together. There we go. Okay, so size, height-wise, you got you know a good inch or so on the Hudson versus the versus the Beaumont, and the Hudson is much more kind of squared off. He's you know Brian's progressing more with tapers and things like that, and I really like what he's doing with his newer stuff. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention: the Collier's clip is actually the same as the Beaumont. Um, you know, size-wise, it uses the oh, okay. It's got the same contoured grip on the Hudson as the Beaumont as well. So if you're used to the Hudson, it's got that same grip. Um, it's not as big a diameter. It's a little bit thinner than the Hudson, but it's the same contour. So there you go. That's the Hudson. Uh, I've got the Herald here as well. That one is a little bit smaller than the other two, but. Um, different clip, really different kind of tapered thing going on, uh, more of a torpedo shape than the um, flat top type of look. So even the Herald looks a little bit bigger. The Herald is more of a, what I would consider like a normal size pen. But um, same nib on the Herald as the Beaumont. There you have it. Um, the grip on the Herald is a little bit more of a taper towards the front. It's not a perfect contour like you have here. Um, so that's the Herald, and then the Premier, which I kind of already showed a little bit. That is got even more of a striking torpedo shape than the Herald does. Um, it's a, definitely longer than the Beaumont. Um, not not much larger in diameter. The Beaumont is pretty similar in diameter, maybe just a little bit smaller than the Premier, um, and it's got a very similar grip to it as well. Uh, I don't know if it's exactly identical, but it's very, very close in diameter and in shape. Same nib size. So there you have that. And then the Encore, you know, of course, I already showed you uh, next to it. Um, and those are all the production Edison pens, at least as of August of 2012, which is when I'm shooting this video. Um, so anyway, there you have it. This is the Beaumont in all three colors. I really like the depth that these flake materials get. Um, they're somewhat translucent in the light parts, especially the onyx. Um, you can see just a little bit of the threading, a little bit of the tooling on the inside of the, of the cap um, on, on the onyx, but that's not unusual with a uh, transparent pen. It's something that is to be expected. It's not a defect or anything. It's just part of the manufacturing process. Um, so I just wanted to point that out. But, you know, the three colors overall look really nice. These are, I'm actually kind of jealous a little bit. We would have probably liked to use something like this in the Encore when we came out with it, but these are new materials that Edison has sourced out. Um, so these have never been used uh, in any production pen, certainly, and very probably only a couple of pens out there in the Edison Signature line that might have these materials. So they're really nice. I'm, I'm a big fan. I'm, I'm a fan of Edison pens, obviously, um, and uh, they do well. The, the pens will be selling for $149, um, which is the new standard, you know, price for Edison. It used to be $150 even, now it's $149. That saves you a buck. You know, you can get an extra ink cartridge or something <laughs> for that price. But anyway, there you go. There you have it. Um, I, I'll go ahead and ink one of these up for you. What the heck? This video is long enough already. I'll make it a little bit longer. Um, you know, you can look at any of the other videos that I've done, and it's going to write the same as all of the other pens, basically. Um, but, uh, you know, because it uses the same nib and feed unit. But anyway, so I've got my converter here. I've got a bottle of Noodler's Black, which is kind of like my standard ink. That's what I use for the nib nook. That's what I, um, I use it in a lot of my own pens as well. So I'm not going to ink it up all the way, but I'll get a little bit going there. And, of course, I forgot a paper towel, just as I always do. Uh, let's see, let me grab one. Okay. One thing I do kind of like about the black grip section is, you know, it doesn't, uh, you don't have to be as, 
as worried about it staining or anything like that. Not that that's ever really a problem with Edison pens, but um, there you go. Okay, now reassemble the pen. Okay. Don't want to spill my ink, so I'll set that back over there. Um, now, lately I've been posting all my pens, so I'm going to go ahead and post it and do a little writing sample here for you. It starts right up. When I, when I ink it up through the nib with a converter as opposed to using the eyedropper, it's, uh, it's going to start a little easier. If you're doing the eyedropper, then the whole feed is dry. So you've got to kind of work that ink through the feed, which you can either kind of leave it, um, you know, standing up like this or on its side for a while to get that ink through. Um, you can try and use a paper towel to feed the ink through um, just by, you know, doing this kind of thing just by touching the paper towel to the top side of the feed. It helps to draw the ink through. That's what I use sometimes to get to ink, get ink going in a stubborn pen, but there you go. Very nice. This is a uh, fine nib that I have in this one. Um, the Edison nibs are um, German. They're made by Yovo. Um, that's, that's a very reputable company, and they um, are smooth with a hint of feedback, as Brian Gray himself advertises that his nibs are and it is just that I'm using it on Rhodia 80 gram dot paper dot pad paper um, which is a pretty smooth paper as well um, Brian Gray tends to standardize on Rhodia too he's a big fan of the feel of Rhodia so it's flowing very nicely uh, the Edison nibs you know have a really really good reputation and not only that but you know Brian Gray is a very reputable manufacturer he he uh, always stands behind the stuff he makes, so that's part of the benefit of Edison is you're you're getting to support. You know, it's American-made pen. It's made in uh, Milan, Ohio, which is the birthplace of Thomas Edison. In case you're wondering why Edison Pen Company is called what it is, um, so there you go. That's enough of my scribbling. But anyway, you get the picture. It's, it's a nice writing pen. I I do like it. I like the smaller pens. Rachel's a big fan of it too. Uh, my wife, she's got much smaller hands than I do, and when we designed the Encore, that was the intention, was to make the smallest production Edison pen that has ever been seen. And now this one, it's a little bit larger in diameter in the body and the cap, um, but it's actually a little bit shorter. The nib is longer, so it's a different feel uh, than the Encore by just a little bit, but, you know, the Encore is 165 you know, it's got that medallion in the top, that's a lot of why uh, it is that price, but... Um, you know, two nice pens. It's it's kind of tough to decide between the two actually, but um, I'm a, I'm a fan of the new uh, Beaumont, and I'm eager to see what kind of reception that it gets uh, within the the writing community. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, you can always shoot me an email at brian at Right on.